Hello guys, uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, my name is Cheyenne Konzake. Some people may know me as Fitness Ken Show on Instagram, Twitter, uh, my Facebook page. Uh, but yeah, welcome to my first official YouTube video. Uh, just wanted to take some time and pretty much just go over a couple of things that I want that I've been meaning to go over um, Just so you guys get a sense of where I'm coming from as far as what I want to bring to the table um, Now that I've just dive, dove into this actual fitness industry uh, Just a little background about me um, Back in 2012, I was a little bit overweight um, I think my heaviest I reached was 294 Almost reaching about 300 pounds and I was just disgusted by the way I looked, I didn't feel attractive, um, pants that going shopping was real dismotivating, it's like, damn, like what, what kind of pants actually fit me now, you know, like my size was going up, I think my biggest size in my pants I reached was at about a 44, so it was a very tough time, um, tough period of my life, and I was just like, man, something has to change, so right off the bat, I was like, man, if, if I gotta change, I gotta put in the work, uh, you know, in the gym, so, my whole mentality was not really diet, it was I like, just gotta go to the gym, attack, try to get these gains, um, try to lift as much weight as I can to be able to lose this weight. Um, so that's what I did, you know, I was had a split of, uh, I would do uh, chest and arms, uh, back and shoulders and legs on their own. I would do that cycle twice a week for a total of six days and I'll have one rest day on Sunday. Uh, but one thing that I noticed was that the diet was not changing. Um, so the scale wasn't changing either. So even though I felt stronger, I saw a little muscle gain here and there, but the fat wasn't going away. I was still fluffy. Um, the pant sizes weren't going anywhere. I wasn't feeling comfortable yet. I wasn't feeling attractive. Um, so it took a while. It was, it, it, it's actually uh, a lot of trial and error, a lot of uh, self-education as far as uh, looking up material, as far as what foods to eat, uh, what training principles to follow, what's going to be the most effective way for me to get my ideal body, lose the, um, the most amount of fat, uh, and build the most amount of muscle because I wanted that um, aesthetic look. I wanted to have that muscular look um, and minimize my fat to as low as I can, not drastically, but you know, I wanted to be at least below 20%. I believe when I started, I was about 35%. Um, if I get a little more creative with this YouTube video, I'll put um, a little picture up here or something with, uh, you know, my before and after picture. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm cur currently right now, um, well actually let me backtrack a little bit. Um, I went to school at SUNY College at Buffalo. Shout out to my Buff State people. So, uh, <laughs> um, I graduated with a computer information uh, systems degree, which pretty much entails, you know, a lot of programming, web design, um, database administration. So I'm pretty much like an IT geek. So uh, right after college, I did five years in the IT field. Um, and my recent job I had was I was uh, a system analyst and I was a web developer for their for a, a agency that I worked a nursing agency. Um, that was the point in my life where I figured out, you know what, um, this is not for me. Um, I would always be unhappy. Like I don't know if you guys ever had that situation where you get to um, you get to work and you're just thinking like, damn. Uh, maybe I should have not gone to work today or maybe I should call out or just making any type of excuse not to go into work because you just hate it. If you feel like that, I, I, my personal um, my personal opinion right now being that I went through it is not to do it anymore. You know, if you have to do, if you don't have a plan, I'm saying quit your job and, you know, be jobless. But if you have a plan B, like maybe some money saved around or you have a spare job that you could pick up some more hours that you kind of love more than the other job, then definitely don't be miserable for the rest of your life just because life is so short. Um, so that happened about, um, that was at, in two, 2014, so this past year. Um, so before the new year, I know everyone does this new year's resolution, everyone's new year's resolution is maybe to get more money or um, maybe to lose a certain amount of weight, build some muscle, maybe start a family. Um, honestly, let, I'm gonna keep it as vague as possible. My new, new Year's resolution was to do something that was gonna make me happy and I was gonna help other people. Um, the fact that I was so in tune with uh, you know, working out, I was always 
like having a fitness conversation just with like my fellow fraternity brothers or um, just friends or co-workers like that's what get me excited so the fact that I, I had that passion for just making this world a healthier place um, is what told me you know maybe I should be a personal trainer to have that um, hands-on experience and don't get me wrong maybe it was a crazy idea for me to just quit my job but I mean I had a good savings therefore um, the finan financial I knew I would be good for about two or three months I know my parents wouldn't definitely didn't agree with my decision and this actually this is kind of like the first time that I'm telling the world about uh, what actually happened um, in my life as far as how I got into the personal training field um, but yeah it was it was really um, it was a really tough time as far as family agreeing because you know mom and dads always want the best for their kids um, and they have a fear of maybe them not be, being able to support themselves financially so that was my fear for my parents I know I can understand them um, why they were concerned but at, at the same time it's like you know, if you're not doing something that's going to motivate you to get up every day and actually have fun um, and work is not really work, it's just you're getting paid to just enjoy what you love doing, then you're not living your life. Um, so at that point, um, that's pretty much what I wanted to get into um, as far as what was going to fulfill my New Year's resolution. Um, as a personal trainer, I can care about people, I can actually show um, and help people with one of the most uh, difficult things that people struggle with in this country, in the United States, and it's pretty much just health, obesity, diabetes, whatever the case may be, whatever comes with eating uh, crap and not exercising, that is what most Americans struggle with in this country. So the fact that I'm giving, lending my hand to actually um, help out people who, who are guiding, or I mean, who, um, who are seeking those assistance um, or that help, that's pretty much what makes me um, get up in the morning and that's what pretty much makes my day. Um, so at the moment, I'm currently a personal trainer. Um, I have, uh, I actually take a great deal of, uh, of clients throughout the day. Um, I arrange anywhere between uh, 30 to 40 clients a day. Uh, but it's something that I just love and I enjoy doing so again it's not work. I get up in the morning, have my breakfast and I'm ready to go. Uh, I train my clients, I train in between for myself because I have goals that I want to reach. I like to, even if I reach my goal, I like to create new goals just because um, I want to keep my clients knowing that I have goals that I want to reach as well as them. So if we're both reaching goals that should motivate each other. Um, I try to post and give a ton of information as far as uh, creative ways to create diets, um, or different meals or creative ways to do exercises because um, if you're not having fun while you're working out it's not gonna be something that's gonna be long-term for you if you're struggling you completely hate working out or the routine that you like is just oh my god I just want to be over with it um, then you're not gonna stick with it the same thing with the diet um, that's why I'm not a fan of like all these uh, short-term diets because it's a uh, it's not what your body's used to. Um, you can have 2,000 calories for a maintenance and that's what you're used to to maintain your body weight and then you cut it down to like below a thousand. Your body doesn't know how to react to that quick change. Therefore, you're gonna see a change in the weight because you're gonna be losing that water weight. Your, your body's gonna go into, uh, you have to pretty much uh, cannibalize um, your muscle tissues in order to survive so what's in our muscle tissues is glycogen so glycogen is just water weight so if we're losing glycogen from our muscles then pretty much that's the water weight that you're gonna be losing from these fat diets so that's why I'm not a real fan of it I'm all about trying to help people uh, create a healthier lifestyle in the long run even though it's gonna take a longer time to actually see those results in the long run your body's gonna get um, it's gonna thank you because then you can actually apply this uh, 10 years down the road 20 years down the road 30 years down the road and live a long and healthy life so that's pretty much um, what I try to emphasize with my clients um, got a couple of things that I want to actually uh, cover here uh, as far as my training principles I do a mixture of uh, both weight training and strength training um, so strength like I train for strength when I get to a point where um, I have a weight that's I'm plateauing so if I am pushing for example let's say 225 if I'm at 225 and I'm busting out maybe 10-12 uh, reps um, and I've already done drop sets I've done pause reps I've done um, 
you know, partial reps. I've done everything to actually challenge my body with that amount of weight. Um, then that's where I gotta go to the strength training principles and I'll go for that three to one rep max. Um, but I don't strength train that often because I always go, I'm always training for, for looks. Um, I don't care uh, about how much I would lift, it's more about um, looking and looking the part. The part. So as being a personal trainer, I feel like personal trainers should look fit and they should, not, not to say that just because you look fit doesn't does mean you know everything. That's not what I'm saying, but as far as your clients thinking you reliable and uh, you know putting their trust in your hands um, and believing that you can actually produce the results that they want, um, I want to keep improving my body so my clients know that I take the same amount of time that I'm taking with them on myself or even more. Um, because if I was to be out of shape um, and I just lost the way I looked and I just kind of like let the diet go, let the training go, I don't think any of my clients will stick around and continue to train with me because it's like I don't take it serious on myself so how can I take it serious on them? If I can't push my, how can I push them if I can't push myself to reach my, to reach goals? Good. So that's kind of like the thing that I want that I kind of live by. I need to push myself so that my clients know that I know that that I can push them even further to reach their goals when they don't even want to, or they don't, or, or they doubt themselves that they can even get some place. Um, but as far as the trading principles, what I wanted to get to is kind of like I see a lot of people in the gym, and you know, this is like a popular thing that I see now. Everybody wants to like pee. Everyone wants to get a one rep max. Everyone wants to hit, throw the max amount of weight, no matter what your form is looking like. Um, as a beginner in the gym, I'm gonna say this: take your time. And I'm gonna just—that's that, all I want to say. Take your time. So you have someone who's about what is it, 30 percent body fat, 220, 280 um, weight. Um, pretty much your goal should be if your goal is to lose weight and burn fat. You want to stick to high repetitions, a moderate weight that's going to challenge you, but high repetitions. So you want to burn that fat off. Um, I have a, um, I see so many people in the gym who are overweight and they're telling me, you know, they want to lose some pounds, but they're focused on PR and they're just focused on just throwing up as much weight as they can for one rep, one rep max. And I mean, is that impressive? Yes, that's cool. Um, but strength is one of those things that you can't see. Um, there's one guy at the gym that I see all the time. He always says what up to me, and he always says, "Hey, yeah, you know that I'm getting huge, and um, he can lift more than me." I'll put it this way: he doesn't look it, but he can lift more than me because he trains for strength. And if you see him and you see me, you'll be like, "Man, I can out bench him any day." But that's not the case. Um, so just pick and choose when you need to strength train and when you when you don't. Um, Typically, I strength train when I plateau. So if I plateau like to a certain point where I've done everything, anything that to change to keep producing uh, muscle gains, um, then that's when I'll go to strength training in order to push um, the same training principles but with a heavier weight. If that makes any sense. So that's that's the, that's the um, the training principles that I live by. Um, last thing I wanted to cover here on this YouTube video is like a way of thinking of food. So. Um, food is one of those things uh, that people uh, don't have general knowledge about. I know they have uh, some nutrition classes in high school. I believe I took one. Um, I took a couple in college, but um, they weren't telling me like what foods to eat. They were just telling me like what's what, like what's the carb, what's the protein, and what's the fat. But you know, certain people, even to this day, I tell them, oh yeah, you know, just don't eat any carbs after this amount of time, and it's like. They'll ask me what is a carb, you know. So at that point, it's like I feel like people need to know more about nutrition. But um, anyone who is having trouble, because um, actually think of it like this: I can, I tell my clients this all the time. I can kill you for half an hour, an hour with purple, and you could be drenched in sweat. You could be sore the next day. Um, but you're on your own for that the other 23 hours, or the other 23 hours and half an hour and 30 minutes. Um, where you're free to eat whatever you want, and I'm not there to tell you or guide you or tell you to, to tell you what not what to eat and what not to eat. You kind of have to be your own person on that. Like I can tell you what foods to avoid, but at the end of the day, you're the one that's making those decisions. Um, so with that being said, it's like I want to tell people that you want to think of um, food as fuel. Um, it's just a, a way to fuel your body. Um, so me personally, I don't. I try to stay away from sweets. Um, 
at least, at least six times a week. Um, I cook with no spirit, close to no sodium. Um, no salt at all uh, at least six times a week and I enjoy my one weekly cheat meal and uh, you won't know like you you need to understand how amazing uh, a cheat meal feels or tastes when, once you haven't had it in a while think of it as a you know sexual intercourse it, it's been a while let's say we, we both had that, that that time you know it's been a while you haven't had you haven't had uh, been intimate with anybody or you haven't had um, you know intercourse with any, anyone anyone um, and then you finally do it after like maybe three months and it's like the best thing ever you know so that's how i like to think of foods i like to think of it as an enjoyable process um but it's something that we can't do every day just because our bodies are not used to um you know the fried foods uh the sugary sauces um high sodium high sodium diets are going to definitely increase our blood pressure that's something that down the road we want to avoid high sugary uh, meals are gonna pretty much jack up our insulin levels and put us at risk for diabetes and uh those fried foods obviously are going to harden our arteries and put us at risk for heart disease so heart disease is the number one killer at least in this country because of all the fast food that we have available to us um so that's the way i want to think about food food is fuel um like would you put the worst type of gas on your car that you've invested so much money on um if you do that means you really don't care about your car i drive um a vw cc sports 2010 and i think i always get compliments on the car um i don't think anything of it anymore when i first got it i treated it like my baby um i was putting premium gas in it um now i kind of switch between premium and plus but plus is even better than regular so i would never put regular gas in my car just because um, you know, I, I care about the, the, the lifetime of the actual car. So if you care for the lifetime of your body, um, you're going to want to fuel your body with clean, uh, healthy choices so that you can live that longer life, so you can be there for your family. If you have kids, you can be there for your kids and watch them grow up and see their kids grow up. Like, that's my end goal. I want to be able to be active with my kids in the future, and I want to be able to see my kids have kids in the future. And that's what kind of threw me into this healthy fitness lifestyle. And that's why I strive to help other people get into that same uh, mentality and reach their same goals that way. Um, but yeah, I know I'm rambling a lot. I'm, I, I get so passionate when I talk about fitness and getting people healthy. Uh, but that's pretty much, I just want to give a little introduction, a little bit about my views as far as, uh, you know, eating, training principles, and just my background and how I got into this whole fitness industry and my, and my personal training life. Um, I do post a lot of stuff on social media, so it's pretty much everything is at fitnesskensho.com. It's uh, fitness and Kensho without, show without a W. So, um, so yeah, if I, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook page, Fitness Ken Show, and this YouTube channel is gonna be on Fitness Ken Show. Uh, I plan on doing more, a couple of training videos in the future. Um, I pride myself in creating uh, or doing my meal preps. Um, so look out for a couple of meal prep videos as far as uh, how to calculate your macros, how to uh, uh, perfect the meal prep if you haven't done it in the future. Um, and if you haven't, check out my Instagram, follow me, just take a look at it and see, uh, see if you like anything. Feel free to steal any of my ideas because I post this and I meal prep and I try to get real creative uh, for you guys. It's not really for me. I can eat chicken and broccoli and white rice um, all day. Like, honestly, I don't really need the, the fancy lettuce tacos or the cauliflower bun. Um, burgers or the cauliflower rice like that's all just to show you guys how creative you can get with eating healthy um so that you can make it fun and enjoyable and stick through it through the long run um so yeah so with that being said i'm gonna leave i'm gonna cut the, the camera here short i'm gonna cut this video a little bit short um and end it there on that note um and yes yeah, be on the lookout for more videos uh and look forward look forward to sharing more thoughts and um and more uh trading principles with you guys as far as you know how to improve your health in the future and in the long term all right take care guys